Hey there, welcome back to Julie's Wreath Boutique. So I've had a lot of you in my inbox asking me, when am I gonna make another cross wreath? Well, here we go. We're gonna make a cross wreath using the Dollar Tree cross frame. So easy to do. And all I did was take some poly burlap and some greenery and flowers I already had on hand. So let's get started. Okay, so you saw the finished product in the first clip and I'm just beginning it right now, but we're gonna make a cross wreath. Um, these are frames from the Dollar Tree and you can um, go online and purchase them by the case or I don't know, sometimes they allow you to do them um, separately, but um, my link for Dollar Tree is in the description box below. And then we're gonna just use this cream colored poly burlap. Now, you can use whatever color poly burlap that you wanna use. I'm just gonna use cream because I kind of feel like I'm gonna go shopping in the back room and find some things to put in the middle. And I just kind of felt like the cream would be the most neutral. And you're probably wondering, Julie, what is that? This is what I do to put on the back of the wreath. And that's gonna be my first step, is I'm gonna place this on here and I'm gonna cut out the cross shape so that I can put it on the back of the wreath form. Now, you don't have to do that step if you wanna leave it off. If you're putting this at a grave, you might not wanna do that. So, um, but my point is that if you wanna have a nice finish for the back, that's like the first step. So that's what I'm, I'm gonna do. And as you can see, it's a lot of um, felt. I buy this at like Hobby Lobby or Joann's or any of those places that sell it by the yard. And I usually get a better deal when I do this and then I buy it once a year and then it's good to go. So anyway, so let's get started. Okay, so this is part of the video that a lot of you guys have seen and you've sh I've shown how to use the wood burner and I'm going to show you how to do that again because there's always somebody who hasn't seen it and I always want to be very thorough in how I teach you how to make a wreath. Um, that's why you watch, right? <laughs> so anyways, I have a glass cutting board. Mine's pretty dirty. I need to clean it over top of my rotary mat. Now, here's the key. I have had comments where people said, oh yeah, that'll melt your rotary mat. I tried it. Please don't use a wood burner on your rotary mat. This will melt. You must have a glass cutting board, a metal cookie sheet or something that can withstand the heat. Okay, so that is so key. And again, I sell it all in my Amazon store. Description um, link is down in the description box below. It's not my actual store. It's just things that I use that I put in a list and Amazon sells them. So I don't personally sell you guys the products. Amazon does. And I do get a small commission. Um, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but um, I, that's where I add things. And I need to add more things to that list. So I, I'd always be interested in finding out if there was something that you guys, like a list that you guys would like me to put together for that Amazon that you would like to know about. So let's get the wood burner. It is a wood burner and it's a chisel tip. I can show you like the tip there. Don't want to touch it because it's on. It only has one. I can't think I can't pull it over here, but it just has one button. And here we are. I'm going to start my edge here and I'm going to go in between the poly burlap. Now you're probably wondering, Julie, why are you using poly burlap versus deco mesh? Well, let's be honest. Most of the time, these cross wreaths are used probably at the grave site. And I just feel like poly burlap is such a good material to use for the outdoors that I wanted to use poly burlap. It's a little bit thicker. I feel like it'll wear better a little bit um, for the outdoors. So that's why I wanted to use it. Now, could you use deco mesh? Absolutely. Could you use fabric mesh? Absolutely. Um, there would be no change. You might have to use a little bit more just to make sure that you cover it all. Now, like here I have a line. So what I'm going to do is because that's 19 inches, that's not going to work. So I'm just going to cut here and I'm going to throw this piece away sadly but it'll be all right but I'm cutting these pieces at 10 inches apart and that's what I want you to do and I'm probably going to cut most of this roll I'm not really sure how many we're going to use but cut your roll at 10 inches wide and this is a, oops that was a little crooked but um this is a 10 inch wide roll so again if you need places to shop to find this poly burlap i have places in the description box below that is kind of like the link below the video where i can share all my links and all that stuff with you trendy tree the reshop and mel's crafty mojo and mel does have a 10 percent discount if you use the coupon code julie's wreath boutique and um you spend at least 35 dollars so check those places out, support small business, and we'll be right back. 
Okay, so let's get started. I've cut all my mesh. I'm going to grab my zip ties. They're in this little box here. I gotta take out this other tool. But um, I just get these Dollar Tree um, boxes from Dollar Tree um, for like the um, kitchen products. And that's what I put my zip ties in. These are zip ties I do get off of Amazon and they are my favorite. They are a little bit, I wanna say they're around $24 for a pack of a thousand. And I know that's a little pricey and yes, the price has risen since um, last Christmas. It was around 20 bucks. But if you have issues like I do, and you know, when you use these zip ties a lot, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to pull it through and these really pull through really nicely. So um, you're gonna take your 10 inch wreath or piece of poly burlap or deco mesh or fabric mesh, whatever you wanna use. And then we are gonna do a petal that was originally designed, and I know I say her name a lot, by my friend Trish from Dean Michael Designs. And she did this petal a long time ago and everybody else has been using it ever since. So we're gonna do finished side in the bottom and top. Either way, it works if you wanna do it on the side. I'm just gonna be consistent about um, having it at the top and bottom. So you're gonna make a triangle and then you're just gonna kinda lay it down flat, okay? And in the middle section here, which is here, I'm gonna just start gathering it. And basically what this does is makes this little petal. Now, to me, that almost looks like angel wings. What do you guys think? So that's what it reminds me of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlap it a little bit more and I'm gonna pinch it. Make sure it lays right, okay? And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it at the bottom of my cross. I'm gonna take one of my zip ties. You could use um, pipe cleaners if you prefer pipe cleaners. And I am going to just put it around both of the center brackets here. And I'm gonna just pull it really tight. So really you can kind of play with it. Um, let's look at the back. So the bottom here is where um, kind of midway through the leaf, all right? So that's where I put the first one. So let me grab my wire cutters. So these are my favorite clippers. I got, I get them from Amazon. Um, I'm not sure if they're in stock. These are so old. These are probably five years old and I still use them. Um, so hopefully they're still there. So let's grab another petal and we're just gonna keep doing the same process over and over. That's how easy this wreath is, okay? You're gonna be able to make this in no time. All right, now let's see how far should we, maybe about there, okay? So about, let's look, this is where the mat comes in really nicely. So the first one was here and the second one is gonna be about three inches higher. All right, so about three inches apart is, is probably gonna be sufficient for this wreath. And I'm just gonna keep doing it all the way until I get up to here. And then we'll, I'll come back and I will show you how we're gonna do these other parts of the cross. But keep following along because we're gonna make a beautiful wreath. Okay, so I did the first layer. I did kind of figure out that instead of three inches apart, it really needs to be two inches. So um, it's always good to keep watching the video because Julie changes her mind. Um, we know this. <laughs> but the first one had seven. I wanted to kind of show you the back here to kind of give you an example. And you could move this one down a little bit more, but that's about two inches in between each one, okay? And I thought, well, I might add another one up here, but I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna add the other ones first because we're gonna do something in the center here. Kind of, I wanna, I'm, I'm feeling like nature. This needs to be with nature. And so we're gonna do something like that. I don't think I'm gonna put a bow in the middle. If you wanna put a bow in the middle, I have bow videos and I will leave a playlist for you down in the description box and you can check those out. So let's work on the next step, all right? So the next step would be the sides of the cross here. So if we started at the edge of the other one, that's where we should start here. So take your puddle and form it. Make sure it's laying down flat, all right? And I always feel like this is an angel wing look, okay? I think I do a, oh, a um, poinsettia wreath with this too. So let's look, where do we wanna put this? We wanna make sure this is all covered, so 
I'm thinking about a little bit at the two inch mark here is where I'm thinking, okay? This is kind of hard to maneuver because it's so long. So let me kind of move it over here. So I'm gonna just kind of place my frame over my grid here. That's why, that's why I know that this can be a little distracting to you guys at times, but this is why I use it because I use it because it helps me. Um, because we want to make sure that everything is symmetrical, okay? So you want that to be about an inch, and you want this to be two inches, okay? So I'm thinking we're going to do another one right here, one, and we're going to do one here. So two more petals, and do mimic that on this side as well. And while you're at it, you're going to do the same thing up here, okay? So I'm just going to add three petals here, three petals here, and I believe this is the same length, so it should work out the same. I'll lay it about two inches in and then do three more petals or two more petals. I'll let you know if I don't. Okay, so you can see we have the cross here. We have three um, petals on each of these, and I'm going to do something. Um, I'm going to add one more down here because I feel like we need one more, but we're going to do it with a little bit of a twist. So I want you to make your petal. Okay, just the same way that you were doing all the other ones. And we're gonna just grab it and do what we do, okay? And instead of using it and putting it on like that, we're gonna come up about three inches and we're going to do that, okay? So we're gonna have all this extra here. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to actually grab this tool first and I'm gonna just hang on to this. And if you want, you could put a little, um, um, oh, zip tie, but I'm going to take off that excess. Now, if you want one of these tools, I have them in my Amazon shop. These are amazing, super sharp, and they are really, really good for heavy duty projects like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my finger on that and I'm just going to lay it in here like so. This is why you might want to put a little zip tie on it first, because I'm trying to hold it all in. Okay, there we go. Let me move this one over, okay? Just so we have, I just felt like it needed just a little bit more, okay? So let's talk about how many petals we used. So we used nine here and eight there. So you need 17 petals. So that's really great because you could do, if you had maybe you could do another wreath, but maybe alternate colors if you had like a little bit of another roll. So I'm gonna go shopping in my storage closet and we're gonna find something to put in the middle. Okay, so I went shopping and um, I came up with some things I already had on hand so I didn't have to go shop. Um, some of this stuff came from Hobby Lobby and some of it came from, I believe, Michael's and I think some of it came from Joanne's. But honestly, I think you could find these sorts of flowers just about anywhere. I think they're really pretty. Um, this is, okay, this is just a tried and true. I've been using this for six plus years. Hobby Lobby has been selling it. I get it when it's half price and I just feel like it's just a good, um, oh, staple in your craft supply. So I would always recommend getting some of that. And then I believe this one came from Michael's and I'm not really sure what that's called. Maybe a golden rod. I'm not sure. You guys can tell me in the comments below. That's not where I'm good at with naming stuff. So what I did was I cut off the four branches of this greenery kind of um, boxwood. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put them at the each corners here. And I'm gonna see if we can just, if I have enough room to kind of, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the zip tie here and we're gonna get two at the same time. I'm gonna put one this direction, all right? And then I'm gonna put my zip tie through. You can use some hot glue and I probably will use some hot glue here in a moment, but that's how we're gonna start this off. We're gonna do some double duty. All right, so let's do it this way. Okay, so we've got that started. So let's see if we can make this, if the stems are long enough, so I can go through here I probably could have just done all four of those pieces in one zip tie. So you might be able to get it all done in one. I don't know why I didn't think I could do that. Okay. Because I'm going the same direction. 
All right. Let's just make sure that's really good there. Okay. And we might end up putting more of that in, okay? All right. And you know what? I think, let's see. Let's cut off a couple more pieces here. And what I like to do is I just like to kind of make it go up and then we'll cut it a little bit longer. And again, one bush will last me several projects. Let's see, can we do this and this? Yeah, I think so, but you know what? I don't need it that long. Cut that, okay. And honestly, I think we could just kind of put it in underneath what we already have here. Yep, I think that's gonna hold on just fine. And I think that's pretty. I'm kind of looking in the camera to see. I think that's pretty. If some are too long, you can just kind of trim those. And I might trim a little bit of that when it's all done and said. So the next one I'm gonna add is this, I guess, kind of goldenrod. All right, so with this one, I'm gonna kind of try to see if I can get it through the other zip ties and maybe add a little bit of glue. I'm gonna grab my, this is my favorite glue gun. Make sure it's on, it's on. Sometimes I get on here and I forget to turn that on. So that's not a good idea had this for a while. I'm just going to add a touch of glue. It's my Surebonder cordless glue gun. And you're just going to find spots to put this in, okay? All right. And I'm thinking maybe another one here. I want to be careful with the glue. I don't get it where I don't want it. You know what I mean? Oh, so pretty. This is going to be beautiful. Get it in with that zip tie, do it. But if not, that should be, you can always add a little bit, little bit more glue. Just let it, just put it in there. It'll be all right. <laughs> okay, so then I have these really pretty peach colored um, flowers and it has some really pretty greenery. I think I'll probably clip some of this off too. And that's what I like about all of this is you can just kind of find, let's see. I'm gonna kind of put it in here. This one, I kind of, let me check. Let's try this again. Let's see here. Just kind of maybe add a little bit. Yep, that looks good. And you're just gonna kind of put them, place them wherever you want them. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue. Again, if this is going outside, you might want to wire down each piece. Um, you know, that's a pretty long wire and I could just go through here and I'll just show you on the back here and just wire that to the back of the frame. And I'm just gonna keep adding little things of like rosettes and I'm gonna think I'm gonna wire that one too and then that way you can kind of you'll have more of an organic feel all right and we're gonna cover that with um, felt remember I cut out a piece of felt so I'm gonna add a few more of these I'm gonna clip some of these little greeneries off probably just gonna glue some of these on because they're just like little sprigs I want to glue it away from my wreath because I've gotten glue on my wreath by doing that before. And you're just going to find a spot that it'll kind of stick onto. Okay, so I think that's turned out really, really pretty. I just added more greenery and more goldenrod, if that's what it's called. And as many of the little flowers as I had, I just kind of put it all in there because I think that it's beautiful. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to put a little loop on the back of our wreath here. So I'm just going to I'm gonna gently place it right here. And I'm just gonna take, you could take a zip tie, you could take a um, pipe or pipe cleaner, and you can just put a little bit of a loop, just big enough so that it can go on a door or wherever you wanna hang it, okay? So there's my loop, so I'm gonna cut that end off. And then the last part of this wreath is the cross, the felt that I cut for the back of it, okay? So this is what you could do. You could do one of two things. Since I've already made, um, and you're gonna wanna trim some of that, and you could even zip tie some of that to your frame, okay? You can be really, really careful. If you can be really careful, 
you could glue that, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut, make a few holes. I just take my really super sharp scissors here, and I've got some little zip ties, and I will simply just make a few holes in my felt here, and I will attach it to the frame. So I'll do that side, and then that off and then you're just gonna make sure that head of that zip tie is pointed under so I'll do one on this side I'll do one here maybe here and here and just just enough so that this is covered nicely okay okay so we're we've got the backing on I'll show you really quick here just I didn't do too many you know I just put a few on just wanting to cover that up and then um you're looking at like 17 or 18 petals all together. And I think that's a really good, um, it's it's too big for the camera. It's 30, um, about 32 inches in length and about 24 inches in width. So it makes a very nice size wreath, okay? Now, this would be beautiful for a funeral, it'd be beautiful for on your door, for Easter, for a grave site, but if you wanted to add, if this was for a lady and you wanted to add a little bit of bling, you could go to the wedding section at Wal um, not Walmart, but Hobby Lobby, and you could add, if this wasn't gonna be outside, cause this is metal, so if it wasn't gonna get rained on, I think that would be some really pretty touches to add a little bit of bling in there. But I think it turned out beautifully. I really appreciate your time in watching this um, wreath tutorial. I would love to know in the comments below what you want to see from the channel here in the future. I have a lot of exciting things that I have planned for Julie's Wreath Boutique in general, and I'll be sharing that with you guys soon. But leave me a cross or something um, related to Easter in the comments. And then um, if you haven't found me on social media, all my links are in the description box below. I'm the same name across the board, Julie's Wreath Boutique from Pinterest, from TikTok to Instagram to Facebook and here. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. Until next time, we'll see you in Julie's Wreath Boutique. Bye-bye.